Okay, I've started the recording. Welcome everybody to the September Open Forum. Um, today, I have the pleasure of introducing Lisa Siefker because today will be the first of our opportunities to share the Sensational Awards. And we will be doing that each month through the fall. So September, we have um, The Ohio State University for their award for compliance innovations. We will have another presentation in October, November, and December. I believe that I posted those um, within the most recent e-newsletter. So you can find that there. But on our open forum sessions, we'll be having these presentations, which we will record and post them on the SAN website. So today, as I said, we have Lisa Siefker. And what we've decided to do is uh, do these presentations uh, as much as we can in person. And uh, uh, Lisa was uh, welcoming today, and I really appreciate that. I ran over to Columbus and uh, was able to award her the Ohio State's um, Sensational Award in front of Mirror Lake, which is an iconic place on the Ohio State campus. And uh, so I was very excited to be able to do that in person. And we are hoping to do that with each of the award winners um, for the Sensational Awards uh, uh, during this year. Uh, Lisa, are you back? I am, is this better? Yes, thank you. Uh, everybody else, if you want to put in the chat, if you're still having difficulty, I know somebody was having difficulty with me, with my voice a few minutes ago. Let's go for it. Lisa, I'm going to turn it over to you, if you could please, and, and share a little bit about uh, State Authorization 101 online training module. Sure. Um, if I am able to share my screen, I have some slides that I could share. There you go. All right. Well, first, Cheryl, thank you very much for visiting us in Columbus today. Um, I actually haven't been on our campus in about six months, so it was very interesting to be back there, and it was nice to see you this morning. Thank you. Uh, just so that you know, what we're seeing for your share screen is um, not in the slideshow mode. Just there we go. how you want to do it. Okay, great. Is that better? Uh, you had it a second ago and now we're back to that. There we go, there it is. All right, thank you. So again, thank you for having me today. Um, I'm happy to be sharing information on an interactive state authorization training module that we developed for faculty and staff at The Ohio State University. And today I'll provide some background on state authorization communication and training challenges that we face at Ohio State, as well as um, how we got the idea for this project and then how the training module was developed. And I'll talk through some next steps that we're planning for the module. And I'll also share the resources we use so that if anyone would like to develop a similar module at their institution, um, you'll see what resources are required for that. Um, so just to share a little bit of background, um, the communication and training challenges we face at Ohio State, I'm sure, are similar to the challenges that all of you face at your institutions. Um, in our case, the state authorization team is a centralized unit that's housed in the Office of Distance Education and E-Learning. And our team of two full-time employees is tasked with bringing 15 separate colleges and four regional campuses into compliance with state authorization regulations. And in addition to that, we also need to communicate with other support units, um, such as student financial aid and the Office of the Registrar um, regarding all of our state authorization compliance processes. And we also, of course, communicate with students um, who are either going out of state for a field experience or enrolled in a licensure program to share appropriate disclosure information with them. So specifically today, I'm gonna to talk about a tool that we developed to reach our faculty and staff stakeholders. Um, there's a large number of faculty and staff stakeholders who need to receive state authorization information, and they don't always know that they need to receive this information. There's also a fairly high turnover in those stakeholders 
So we're always having the need to identify new stakeholders and to reach out to them as they're onboarded. So with all of that in mind, I was completing some required refresher training in our Buckeye Learn system. Um, at Ohio State, as probably in a lot of other organizations, new employees are required to complete training modules and current employees periodically complete refresher training on a lot of different subjects such as data privacy and security, um, public records law, Title IX requirements, etc. So as I was completing this training, I started to wonder if it might be possible to develop a similar training module as a tool to share basic state authorization information with our stakeholders. So although there isn't a substitute for actually meeting with your stakeholders in person and developing those relationships and communicating directly with them, um, I thought that a module might allow us to reach a larger number of stakeholders and particularly employees in the new employee category who are onboarding into some of these key roles. So after we had the idea to develop a module, um, the first step was to socialize the idea. Um, we started with our state authorization advisory committee, which is made up of stakeholders from across campus. And I also talked with distance education team leaders to see if there was support for the idea. And the feedback I received at that point was pretty positive. So the next step was to reach out to some of the staff who would need to be involved with the development of this project. Um, so in our case, um, I talked with the Buckeye Learn team to learn about requirements that they had for a training module, such as format, length, um, accessibility guidelines. We also talked with an educational technologist and our video coordinator to see if they had availability to help with the project. And then I also identified some stakeholders from across campus who are willing to participate in video interviews that would be incorporated into the, into the training. Um, and lastly, I involved our marketing and communications staff person so that we could talk through how a training like this would be incorporated into our larger strategy. So after we talked to all of those team members and determined that we did have time and resources available to work on this project, uh, the next step was to plan, um, which involved drafting a script, identifying some learning outcomes, uh, creating an outline of the content just using PowerPoint, um, we also drafted some knowledge check questions that were incorporated into the training. And then we started to think about the design. So how we wanted the training to look and feel. Um, and for us, what was really important was that the training would be engaging um, and include some real life examples of how these regulations impact activities at Ohio State. So after that planning phase was complete, uh, we, moved out, we moved into um, actually building the course. So we recorded some video content with those institutional stakeholders that I talked about, as well as recording the voiceover using the script. And then our educational technologist was able to build the course out in Lectora. And we also completed um, an accessibility review to make sure we were meeting all of those requirements and to add some captioning to the course. And then after the course was built, uh, we moved into a pilot phase. So our pilot group included state authorization advisory committee members, 
as well as members of our distance education team. And that group completed the training and submitted feedback to us using a survey. Um, and the feedback was specifically on functionality and course content. So we collected that feedback from the group of around 30 uh, members of the pilot group and made some revisions and tweaks based on that feedback. And then we were ready to launch the training module university-wide. So as of now, uh, the training isn't mandatory for new employees, but we've incorporated it into our larger MARCOM plan and we've communicated about the availability of the training in a campus-wide newsletter. Um, and over the last four months, about 60 individuals have completed the training module. Um, so next, I am just going to share some screenshots from the training module to give you an idea of what it looks like and what the content is. Um, so we have some video elements and then we cover some basic state authorization information as far as what activities would trigger the need for authorization, um, how state licensing boards are involved in all of these requirements. We cover the federal and state regulations as well. And then this is the slide where we link out to the video content with each of our stakeholders. So the idea is that if someone completing the training is managing an online licensure program, uh, that individual could click through the online licensure program button and there's video content from our Associate Dean of Nursing um, explaining how they comply with these regulations in their unit. So the goal is to connect the regulations to what's actually happening in other units and to share some examples of what good compliance might look like in real life. And then this is just an example of some simple knowledge check questions that we included in the training so we can assess whether those learning outcomes are being met. Um, as far as what's next for this training module, um, right now we're assessing outcomes. So we're monitoring who's completing the training and then we're also using those knowledge check questions to see if our learning outcomes are being met. Um, we're collecting and responding to any feedback we receive. And then, as I mentioned, this isn't mandatory for any Ohio State employees right now, but we're working on identifying groups um, who are really key to our state authorization work. So that might be an internship coordinator or online program managers. Um, so we're considering making the training mandatory for some of those key groups going forward. Um, and then there's also a regular review and refresh that needs to happen. Um, we actually built this training before the most recent federal regulations took effect. So now we're actually going back and reviewing where we can update it so that it has the most um, up-to-date content reflecting current regulations. So that will be an ongoing need. Um, I think we're going to have an annual review and refresh for the training. Um, so if you would like to develop a similar training at your institution, um, of course, you'll need someone with knowledge of the regulations and also the processes in place at your institution. Um, you'll need access to course design software. Um, as I mentioned, we use Lectora to build out the course here. Um, if you don't have knowledge of how to build a course, you'll want to talk to an educational technologist or instructional designer. And then, of course, having the time to complete this kind of project can be the biggest um, challenge sometimes. 
Um, I believe from start to finish, we had about six months that we were working on this project. Um, but of course, working on a lot of other projects at the same time. And then a video coordinator and stakeholder participants, I don't think are essential to develop a training module, but that was something that we felt made the training a little bit more engaging and helped to illustrate what we were talking about. So that was all I have to share today. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions now or my email address is here also if anyone would prefer to email a question. Lisa, this is great. I appreciate the work your team did to uh, put this together to help keep uh, your um, colleagues informed at your institution. Um, I think that's pretty important. And, I, and I'm also appreciative of the fact that you all made this and I'll share my screen again. You gave me the um, URL for folks to be able to uh, have a look themselves, which is um, a very generous of you all to do. Um, does anybody have any questions for Lisa about how they built it or how they will implement it and uh, update it, et cetera? Um, you're welcome to take yourself off mute or to uh, put some questions in the chat. While you all are, are putting questions in the chat, um, Lisa, could you share with us maybe what was your biggest challenge in, um, in trying to develop this project? Sure. Um... I think the biggest challenge for us was just finding the time and resources to complete the project. Um, a lot of the team members who we needed to contribute to the project had a lot of other things going on as well. So I think just identifying the resources and then building the time to work on the project into our plan was the biggest challenge for us. How long did it take for you all to um, put these pieces together, roughly? Um, it was about six months from start to finish. And I'll say that another challenge that we found were that the regulations were actually changing as we were building the course out. So trying to keep it evergreen so that it wouldn't be out of date. Um, for example, when we mentioned federal regulations, we were referring people back to our website so that they could find the most up-to-date information on the website. And then the training wouldn't be entirely out of date when the new regulations took effect. Who do you think is gonna be your biggest target audience uh, for uh, this, mod this module? Um, we are hoping that um, people who are tracking student location, so that would be our internship coordinators um, and also staff members who are very involved with online programs and courses. Um, those are the two groups that we're targeting with this training. Um, some of the other stakeholders we already are meeting with regularly and they're easier to identify at an institutional level. So we feel like that we're doing a good job reaching those stakeholders and the training was aimed at um, some of those internship coordinator and program manager type um, stakeholder roles. Do you all interact with the uh, folks that are looking at uh, professional licensure? So do you have subject matter experts that you might be able to interact with for this? Yes, yep, that is definitely another um, segment of stakeholder who would be good candidates for completing this, this training. Terrific. Uh, I, I will share with you all again that um, this link uh, for the um, for the course is provided here in the slide and I just put it in the chat and just to ask you, Lisa, would it be okay to share your slide deck um, with the folks? Yep. Uh, if it's okay, I'll just send the slides to you, Cheryl. Great. So what the plan is, folks, is that you will, I will be creating a page on the SAN website that will 
include OSU's project. And then, um, you know, we're very fortunate uh, next month, uh, Brandy Elliott's going to be um, hosting um, for hers from UMKC. And then we'll move on up to Michigan and University of Michigan will share theirs. And uh, then uh, University of Kentucky will share theirs. And we're very excited about that. So all of those will be added with a main link provided from the Sensational page. So you'll have a number of different ways you can access um, the different presentations that we're gonna be providing over the next few months and the recordings of them discussing their, um, their award-winning work. Um, we do have a question that came in. Um, uh, somebody asked if they could be added to the course as an observer. Um, I believe the course is open to anyone. Um, I can investigate that if you're not able to access it, though. Okay, thank you. Oh, it, it's asking for an OSU login is what it appears. Okay, I'll check with our educational technologist and see if we could make it open to anyone. Great, thank you. And we'll make sure that, as again, this link is made available from the SAN website so that you all can check on it um, after Lisa's had an opportunity to investigate further. Are there any other questions uh, for Lisa? Well, I have to say that OSU's campus was very pretty this morning. Um, it, uh, there's a lot of construction going on, as there always is at a, at a large institution. So I was really pleased to see uh, Mirror Lake had been, um, if, didn't it, wasn't it emptied a few years ago and then now they've revitalized it and it looks very nice. Yes, yep, they emptied it a couple of years ago and then re-landscaped um, all surrounding it. So it does look very nice now. Yes, it does. Um, somebody else shared, uh, Lisa, that they're able to access the, they were not able, wait, I'm able to maybe try using, oh, okay. Uh, somebody's suggestion is trying a different browser. That's, that does happen from time hmm, to okay. A different browser and then someone else is getting a fatal error has occurred, okay. I think what we're gonna have to do here is, is let Lisa investigate a little bit more. Their, their um, intention was to try to make this more available. So if you could give us a, a little bit of time for Lisa to investigate further, um, we'll make sure that um, folks can have access. Plus they'll be able to see the screenshot so that they can uh, share at their institutions about the good work that OSU has, has put together. Any questions about structure? Okay, Lisa, so let me let me uh, see if I have any other questions uh, on my mind here. Um, so how many are working with your team at this point, Lisa? How many? How many are on your team? I guess I shouldn't, I should say. Uh, we have two full-time employees now. Is that including you or you have two with you? Uh, including me. Okay, so two full-time employees. Um, and, and so for the, the build of this, obviously you had tech help, but really it was you and, um, and your colleague that, uh, that put this, that frame, framed this and put it together? Right, so we, the state authorization team drafted the script and then drafted the course content just using PowerPoint slides. And then we were able to share that with our educational technologist and video coordinator who could translate that into the video content and then build out the course so that it was more interactive than just clicking through PowerPoint slides. And that's great that you were able to get a script in the background there and um, other voices that are part of the, of the narrative here. Um, I think the other thing that's impressive for me to know is that um, an institution as large as Ohio State, um, you're, you're a two-man staff. Um, you know, I think uh, a lot of folks would wonder, um, you know, how large would a staff be at an institution your size? But it's the, it's the two of you all that run the show there for um, state authorization. I think that's uh, kudos to you all. Thank you. Okay, well, Lisa, you have provided such a, a, a clean explanation of your work. 
um, that they really don't have uh, an, an more questions. Um, and, uh, you know, as, as others have said in the chat, um, you know, it is nice. And one of the things that we really appreciate about our network is, is people um, like Lisa and institutions like Ohio State and others. We have several others that are, are very generous like this as well to share their work for us to be able to um, mold something or take some advice and guidance and direction um, from some of these institutions and create something at our own institution. So I think that's um, very helpful to have um, pieces and um, uh, good um, thoughts, you know, that we can move um, in the direction to help our institutions with this work. Um, I, I am not seeing anything else. Lisa, I want to give you the last word um, about uh, your experience with, with uh, creating this project. Um, I, I would just say that it was definitely worth spending the time on the project because we are able to reach a much larger group of stakeholders than we would probably be able to meet with one on one or in presentations. And it also gives your stakeholders a resource to refer back to that wouldn't necessarily exist from those one on one interactions. So I would say that it has definitely been useful um, for those reasons here. That, that makes a lot of sense. And I think uh, in this time of COVID, when we can't also um, meet people in team meetings in person, that you've created a tool that um, is really helpful virtually as well. So I think that's uh, very timely. So um, that's, that's great work. And uh, so um, I just want to thank you all for being here today. Lisa said she will share her slides. And as I said, we will post it on the SAN website. We're looking forward to October, November, and December. Uh, for the other award-winning projects that we'll be able to share. Looking forward to being in uh, Kansas City, Missouri next month, um, you know, COVID willing. And uh, so Lisa, again, it was, it was really great to see you today. It was very fun to be able to do this award in person um, and see how uh, Ohio State is, continues to grow and to see you because we don't get to see people very directly these days. So um, that, was, that was really great. So um, thanks everyone. If you have any follow-up questions, be sure to email me or you can email uh, Lisa directly. You know you can reach her through WCET Mix uh, if you don't have her email. Um, she provided it in the slides, which will also be made available. So thanks everybody again, and uh, we'll be seeing you soon. Thanks again, Lisa. Yep, thank you.